Alright, yo, what's going on everybody? It's Smitty back with another Minecraft video. In today's video, everybody, I think I'm going to be starting a little new series on this channel that I'm going to be calling the Redstone Tutorial, the Redstone Guide series, where basically I'm just going to start from the ground up, and I'm just going to start this little series where I kind of teach you guys and give you some redstone knowledge. Because this block right here, this little redstone block, this little piece of dust in my hand right here, it holds so much power, so much potential with this block. And I'm just going to start at episode one. We're going to start very simple. This is going to be an episode for if you like have no clue what redstone even is, we're just going to start from the bottom and work our way up. To the top. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the series. I hope it helps you out a little bit, and let's get into some basic redstone knowledge. Let's do it. So let's actually start out by defining what redstone is. So what redstone is, is basically you can find this block down usually in the bottom 16 layers of the map, and it comes in ore form just like this. It's this red kind of shiny block. What happens when you hit it with your pickaxe, it'll actually light up, and if you break it with your pickaxe, it'll give you quite a bit of XP, and it'll also drop these little redstone, red looking deals right here. And what these are are actually redstone dust. And when you mine a redstone ore block, it'll usually drop around four pieces of redstone dust, just like this in my inventory right here. Okay, so the first thing I think we have to do is give a definition to what redstone actually is. Now, to me, I like to think of redstone as like electricity in real life. Like, literally in Minecraft, redstone is just like a line of wire like this, and you have to find a power source to power this line of wire, and then it'll carry the electricity to a block, and then that block will then perform a function. So that's kind of my definition. I just like to think of it basically as just like electricity in real life. Okay, so the first thing you'll figure out once you have redstone is when you place it down, it'll kind of be a darker color like this, as you can see. And this is the default redstone position. This means that is that it is not powered, that there's nothing powering the redstone dust at this current moment. And what you'll notice is you can actually use a couple devices to power redstone. And how you tell the difference between if redstone is powered or not is obviously if it's lit up. I mean, many people know this, but again, we're starting with the basics. If redstone has power, it'll be looking like this. And if not, it'll be looking like this. So redstone is a block that you can toggle on and off, basically. Okay, so let's start off by identifying the tools that we can use to actually give power to redstone. So right now, all these redstone lines are off. As you can see, they're the darker shade, and these are called redstone lamps. These will actually light up if this redstone is powering it. So what we'll notice right here is if we step on this thing, which is called a pressure plate, it actually detects when the player is on top of it, and it, you'll see the redstone turns on, and it, of course, powers that block because it's running straight into it. And then you'll notice right as I step off the pressure plate, it will deactivate and the redstone lamp will go off. And the cool thing with wooden pressure plates is you can actually throw items on top of them and then they'll, the items themselves will also weigh the pressure plate down and will give power to the device until this item despawns in five minutes or until you pick it up, just like that. So pressure plates are one great way to power redstone. And the next device we have right here is called a button. So what you can do with the button is you can actually push it, it'll turn on the redstone and then it'll automatically turn itself off after 10 ticks. So you see, I press the button, it turns on the redstone lamp, and then it shuts off automatically, just like that. So redstone buttons are also, they look pretty clean, they can also be very useful. We'll get into those later. So next up, we have a lever. And the cool thing with a lever is you can actually flip it to the side, it'll turn on forever, you can walk away, do whatever you want, you can fly away over here, build your own house, and it'll stay on the entire time until you come back in manually, turn it off again. So that's the cool thing with the lever, you don't have to be here, you can flip it and you can literally leave and your redstone will be on forever. Moving on, we kind of had just the redstone dust. Similar to the lever, it'll stay on forever if it's there until the block is either broken or it's removed by something else and then the the, it, the power will, will be gone, basically. Moving on up here, we have a daylight sensor. So this basically senses when it's daytime or nighttime and then it gives off a redstone output based on that. So right now it's set to nighttime mode. And as you can tell, it's not nighttime out, so it's giving no redstone. But you can actually flip it to daytime just like that by left clicking it. And now it senses the sunlight and it gives a redstone output based on how strong the sun is. And right now it's enough to get it to this block. So that's kind of cool. Daylight sensors, we'll probably get into those later because they can definitely be used for quite a few things. Okay, so moving on, we have the redstone torch. Now the redstone torch is similar to the lever over there and the redstone block in the sense that once you place it down, it'll stay on forever until you either break the torch remove the torch, and then of course the power goes off. But the cool thing with redstone torches is that they can actually be turned off and they can be used to change outputs and stuff, and it's, it's really interesting. We'll be getting into that later as well. And then another cool device is right here. It's called a trap chest, and basically when you open the chest, it, does, it senses that and it actually gives a redstone output, which will power that lamp right there, if you can see while you're inside the chest. So that's another cool one. Obviously, there's a lot more ways to power items than this, but these are just a few of the basics, and specifically these three down here are very, very common ways, oops, there goes that lever, to power redstone. All right, so now that we got all the power sources that we can use to power redstone let's get into a few devices that redstone can actually power and then cause the devices to use their function so right here we have a redstone lamp as you can see earlier when it gets powered it simply lights up that's really cool that can be very useful if you want to walk into a house turn the lights on if you want to make like a digital clock it's really cool a lot of uses for that Obviously just iron doors, very simple, very classic use. You can power doors with redstone, very awesome. This is a huge one, this is probably the biggest one. We got pistons, pistons are very important. Using redstone does power pistons, and as you can see right there, pistons push blocks. We'll get into that in a little bit, that's insane. Up here we have note blocks. Note blocks can play notes and play songs, and there's just so many possibilities with these. Redstone can also power those. Another use are actually dispensers. Dispensers are very useful, they will shoot out items just like that. Awesome block, and we'll be getting to these later. They, they're used for a lot of things. 
And then finally, things like trapdoors, which not a very common use, but of course it can do stuff like that. And of course these are not all the uses for redstone, but just a few of the very basic and like very commonly used ones. Okay, so next we're going to look at our first limitation when it comes to redstone. So if we look back, when I was powering these items, there was only three pieces of redstone dust just like that and then it hit the item. But what happens if we have a long chain of redstone like this, a long wire of redstone, will it be able to power these redstone lamps? And this is actually really interesting because this is where we run into our first restriction. So if we flip this lever, we know it'll power the redstone. We see it powers the redstone, but we also see the lamps did not turn on. And this is because redstone dust, when powered with one of these big power source blocks, a lever, a button, a pressure plate, it'll only travel 15 blocks, just like this. So if we count these off, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, we see it gets to right here, and then it, you can clearly see the textures change as it, as it runs lower on power, and it finally hits this block right here, and because this is the 15th block, and this is the 16th block, the redstone power does not make it this far, therefore, this redstone uh, torch, or this redstone lamp right here, does not turn on. Likewise, we can see why these other two are not turning on, where you have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 right here, it also shuts off, it doesn't get there. Of course, we got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It also doesn't get there. And the cool thing, redstone, it can be placed like this. It can go up, down. Redstone can be in all directions. So we can go, we can go different route and go 10, 11, 12. If you place a redstone dust up like this, this is only two. This only counts as two. One, two. It doesn't count this side one. So it'd be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So no matter what redstone route it takes here, it won't be able to get to the lamps and they won't be able to be powered on. So what can we do about this problem? Well, I guess the first thing we could do that would make sense kind of is to just move the power block and say, put it right here. And then you can see that the lamps will turn on because now it only travels less than 15 blocks and it can get there. But that doesn't really make much sense because like, let's say you want to power it from your house and you want the block to be right here and you have to leave your house every time to activate the contraption. This just won't do. Let's find an alternate route. And this is where the redstone repeater comes in right here in my inventory. This thing right here, the redstone repeater, it works wonders. The repeater is a very crucial tool to Minecraft redstone and I will show you why right now. As you can see right here, we have a very long line of redstone dust just like this. We know this is going to be more than 15 blocks in length. So when I flick the lever, we know for sure this lamp won't turn on because this is much more than 15 blocks. So we go travel our 15 blocks and then it dies right here. So instead of actually moving the power source all the way right down here, what we can do is break this block right here and then actually place a redstone repeater. And what that'll do is it will actually repeat the signal and it'll give it a fresh 15 more blocks of travel. And this entire signal right here, no matter how strong this input is, it'll output 15 blocks farther of redstone dust and just like that it powers the lamp. So now when we turn this lever off the lamp will also turn off and we can turn the lever on and the lamp will turn on. Because again this signal goes 15 blocks this way and then it dies right here but this repeater catches it and then it repeats the signal and it goes another 15 blocks this way and then it's just right here in time and this final piece of redstone dust with power will power this lamp on. And that is the power of the redstone repeater. It's very useful, helps us send longer signals, very crucial part, very important in Minecraft redstone. So now with that knowledge we can actually go back to our original scenario. So these lamps aren't going to turn on when we flip this lever and that's because again it runs out of signal but now that we know that the redstone repeater can save the day if we just break one piece like this we place a repeater it'll power all this redstone a lot lot heavier a lot stronger power and it'll easily very easily get to the redstone lamps because this is much less this is one two three four five six seven it's like seven blocks to this lamp and it's not even close to 15 so very strong signal now problem fixed we can come back here flip the lever off and there you go the lamps are on the lamps are off we can use redstone torches we can use buttons and everything, all these power sources over here, pretty much, not all of them, but a lot of them give off 15 signal strength worth of redstone and it'll easily, easily light those up. Another thing redstone repeaters do is actually add delay to redstone circuits. So if we look right here, we have a lever hooked up to a redstone circuit. We know this is going to be turned on when the lever turns on because it's hooked up. We have one circuit going to the left and it's going to instantly power this redstone lamp. And then we have one going to the right coming out of that center block and it's going to run into a repeater which will then run into a lamp. Now what this repeater is actually going to do is it's going to delay the redstone and make this lamp turn on later than this one. This one's going to be instant and this one's going to be a little bit delayed. I'll show that right now. I flick the lever. The left one obviously turns on sooner than the right one. And this is because Minecraft runs on a tick system. Now what I mean when I say Minecraft runs on a tick system is that's basically how the game kind of like keeps track of time, kind of how it deals with everything. Every one second you play Minecraft, 20 in-game ticks will happen, which means that one tick is about 0 0.05 seconds. So repeaters can actually add up to four ticks of delay. So one tick, two ticks, three ticks, and four ticks. So this one is set to four ticks of delay, so we know that it'll add 0 0.2 seconds. So this, this one right here will shut off 0 0.2 seconds quicker, and that one over there will turn on 0.2 seconds late. So if we start the timer, we go. That one got lit 0.2 seconds later because the repeater added delay. One more time, we shut it off. That one shuts off first, then that one. Then we turn it on. That one turns on first, then that one. And it's this delay system that is actually very important to redstone as well because it can help you time up machines. You can add repeaters uh, back to back to each other like this and that'll add even more delay. So now this will go off 0.4 seconds later than that one. This will be very noticeable. We flick it, 
that's on, and then that one's on. So yeah, repeaters can be used to add delay just like that. You can set it to one tick and four ticks. There you go, you can flip that, it's a little quicker now. You can set them both to two like that. You can have fun with just making timings with repeaters. They help a lot with that. So yeah, uses so far for redstone repeaters. They make signals longer, they repeat them, and they also add delay. And we'll get more into all that stuff later on. But let's go on to another use for repeaters. So right here we have two scenarios where we have a lever hooked up to redstone which runs into a block just like this and then the redstone goes through the block and into a lamp just like that. This one side is simply using redstone to power the block and this one over here is using a repeater. So let's see if these both will in fact power the lamp. And if you flick the left one, you'll actually see that the lamp does not get turned on. But if you flip the right one, you'll see that the lamp gets turned on. Now, the reason we have a difference in outcomes here is because there's two different things. A soft-powered block right here, and a hard-powered redstone block over here. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's start by looking at the soft-powered block right here. So what a soft-powered block is, is it's a solid block. It can't be glass. It can't be like a trapdoor. It has to be a solid block, like this iron block right here, like a grass block, like anything, basically, like stone. And basically what it can do is still power redstone machines just like this if they're touching the block. So it can be a redstone lamp, it can be a piston like that, it can be a piston on the bottom. Soft power blocks do give out signals from all angles just like that from the block. But the soft power block is actually not strong enough to send a signal through the block and power more redstone like this. So this soft power block is powering the block only, and since all these things are touching the block, they're getting powered as well. But the signal's not strong enough to get it through and send it through the block to this uh, redstone lamp over here. Now the thing is, you will never be able to hard power block simply by using redstone dust. You can run redstone dust into blocks like this all day, but it will never go fully through unless of course you want to go over the block, or if you want to go under the block, but it'll never work like this. I guess there is one way to take a redstone output from a soft powered block, and that is of course by using repeaters. Repeaters are awesome, you can just run redstone dust into a block and then a repeater will catch that, whereas regular redstone dust won't, but if you place a repeater, it will then take an output from that, and just like the other hard powered block over here, it'll work, they're just flipped around. And in order to hard power a redstone block, you need to power it with something like a redstone repeater like this. You could also use a lever, a pressure plate, a button. And what a hard power block will do is the same as the soft power block, it'll also power pistons, redstone lamps, everything that's attached to it, it could be on the top, bottom, sides, anything that's touching the block, it'll get powered, but also it's strong enough to send a redstone signal through the block just like this which will also power this lamp. <laughs> So what we have right here are a bunch of other items that will also hard power redstone blocks. So a lever will hard power redstone block, and if a block is hard powered, you'll see that a redstone output will also be taken from the bottom like this. It can be one block above it and it'll still get powered. But what you see is if I hop over here under this pressure plate, you would expect this redstone lamp to be turned on, but it's not because all that this redstone is doing is running into the block and it's soft powering that block but it's not hard powering the block. So again, that block has enough power to say power a piston when I step on this pressure plate. It's powering the block, and because the piston is touching the block, it gets power, and if I step off, it'll shut off. But it's not strong enough to send the signal through the block, and in order to do that, we have to place a repeater just like that, which is again, why repeaters are so useful, so many uses for them. And this really is an amazing feature, being able to hard power blocks like this, because what it means we could do is we could break it right here, we could place redstone coming out this left side of the block, you can take outputs from just everywhere, absolutely everywhere out of the block, because it's hard powered, the block will be able to power redstone. But again, if this is just redstone dust running into a block, it won't work because it's just a soft powered block. And of course, soft power blocks won't give any redstone outputs through the block like this. So right here we have all the directions that redstone can actually be taken out of a hard powered block. So this lever right here hard powers the block and it powers all these redstone pieces. You can take them out from all the sides, you can take them out from the bottom, and you can also take one out from the top. So literally every single angle of this block you can take a redstone output from. And that's the same if say we place this down and we placed a repeater running into that block right there. And because it hard powers the block, it'll power all this redstone dust as well. But once again, we place the redstone dust and it won't work. It won't power any of these. It'll just connect to the top one. Again, you just need a very strong power source to power all these pieces just like that. And redstone dust just doesn't get the job done. But yeah, that's the whole thing on hard powered block and soft powered blocks. Of course, we'll always get into this later in more episodes, but we're gonna move on over here. Two of the most important blocks in the game when it comes to redstone, sticky pistons and regular pistons. And this will be the last thing that we cover quickly. So there are two types of pistons in Minecraft. You have the regular piston and you have the sticky pistons. Now these things are crazy important because what they can actually do is move blocks if they get a power from a redstone source. So this lever is right next to the redstone lever. We know that redstone levers give outputs to all sides. So this uh, this uh, piston right here is getting powered because it's one block away to the, to the left here of this lever. So when we flip the lever, it powers that piston, which causes it to extend. And this regular piston will simply push the block out one, and then it will retract, and the block is out one block farther. This is very, very useful. But when we go to the right over here and look at the sticky piston, we'll see that the same thing happens. We, have, we flip the lever, the piston extends, and it pushes the block out one, 
but when we flip the lever here, it'll actually pull the block back. And this is the main difference between sticky pistons and regular pistons. Sticky pistons, when, put the, when they push the block out like this, they're both, they're both extended. When this one attracts, it doesn't attach to the block. And when the sticky piston retracts, it does attach to the block. There are some blocks that sticky pistons can't grab, but we'll get into that later. Okay, so now we're going to try to put everything that we've put together that we've learned in this episode together. Absolutely everything, and we're going to do it by making a 2x2 two two redstone door. Now this is literally one of the just oldest and most basic builds in the book, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to place blocks on the faces of these sticky pistons, and we're going to make a door out of it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get a power source to power these pistons, which we've learned. So what we're going to do is use a lever for this, and I'm not saying this is by any means a great 2x2 two two piston door design, but it's just using the basic concepts that we've learned so far. So we have our lever with, with our power source now. So we know when we flip this lever, it'll turn the redstone on. So we need to move the redstone into a location where the pistons will get powered. So we could run it into the bottom one like this, but then we realize that just the bottom one gets powered and the top one doesn't. And this is because a sticky piston is a transparent block and not a solid block. So the difference is here, if I broke this sticky piston right now and placed a solid block, we'd realize that the top piston would get powered because this redstone dust is powering the block. And because this sticky piston is touching that redstone block or the block that's getting powered by redstone, it extends just like this, but the same does not apply when it's a transparent block. So sandstone right here that I'm using is a solid block, but something like glass is not a solid block. So if we ran redstone into it, it would not power any any redstone contraptions on any sides because it's not solid. Whereas of course, if we placed block of iron, dirt, like basically a lot of other blocks in the game, it would power everything else. So yeah, but anyways, yeah, likewise to glass, a sticky piston also does not power the piston above it because it's not a solid block. So we have to find a different way to get power to this top block as well. So what we can actually do is just simply break this redstone dust right here and place it up one block and then place a piece of redstone on top of that. Now what this will do is actually cause both of them to extend just like that and be able to be turned on and off. Now if we actually analyze this and look at it and think about why this works, it's because when we place this redstone dust right here, this top redstone dust is running into the top, running into the top piston which, which powers it. But at the same time, it's also softly powering this, this block right here which gives off redstone outputs to all sides, which means this bottom sticky piston will get powered by the block that is being powered by the redstone, whereas this top sticky piston is being powered by this top piece right here. Because yeah, when we break this top piece, you'll see the top one shuts off, but the bottom one is still on because this redstone block is being powered, and that's what's powering that sticky piston. But if we place one on top just like that, this one runs straight into the piston, and that will cause that to extend. So we can do that on both sides just like this. And then there we go, we've basically got the most basic, I guess, design ever for, for a 2x2 two two piston door. I mean, you could walk over here, you could flip it on and off just like that. I mean, I know this is just an awful design because we are now locked in our house, but it's just the basics, it's very simple. It's just getting getting a hold of things, seeing how things work, and it's kind of fun to just kind of experiment around. And of course, if you want to run a redstone repeater into blocks like this and add some delay to the door, you can also do that as well. So we've set it to full ticks, and now the door will take longer to close, open and close. And I guess if we want to display this, we can just put redstone over there. And now you'll see this side takes a lot longer to close because it's it's delayed by the repeater. So there you go. It's now off cue. It's off center. Nothing synchronized. It hurts the human heart. So we got to center that up just like this. And there you, you can add delay with repeaters as well. And it'll still work because the repeater powers the block, which will power the redstone dust on top. That's why it's getting powered. Yeah, this is an awful design for a 2x2 two two door, but it's just working with the basics. I mean, if you wanted to build a good one, you could like, you could build one kind of like this. I mean, still not the best design, but this one uses like redstone torches and stuff. And it's definitely like like the better way to build a 2x2 two two piston door, but we didn't really learn all this stuff, so I'll just save that for a later episode when we get a better understanding of everything. Thank you all so much for watching. Go mess around, play some creative redstone, and for sure, try to get into redstone, because redstone, literally for me, it's just so much fun. It opens up an entirely new realm of possibility in Minecraft. It's amazing. Thank you all so much for watching episode one. I hope you all enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. And until the next one, I'll see you guys later. It's been Smitty. Peace out, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.